Finally tonight, the wildest and weirdest race of 2011. Wildest is the superlative used by The Nation magazine to describe the race for District 1 School Board in Denver. The campaign for the District 1 school board seat, one of the three open school board seats in Denver this year, is on. It's on its way to being a quarter of a million dollar race if it has become a partisan proxy in the, in the war on uh, uh, Democrats and Republicans going on in this country. It has filtered all the way down into a school board race. This is school board candidate Emily Sirota at her campaign announcement in August in a gazebo with some pizza and soda and a few dozen people. Emily Sirota is a mother of a 10-month-old boy. She worked on education policy as a former aide to Montana Governor Brian Schweitzer. She raised $57,000, including $22,000 from the Denver Teachers Union. Her opponent, Ann Rowe, has outraised her 3 to 1, raising a record $176,000 for her District 1 school board campaign. The Colorado Statesman filed this report recently on the influx of money into the Denver school board election. Many of the contributions this year come from the oil and gas industry and from investment bankers Henry Gordon, president of Strata Capital and Strata Resources, a business that offers investment in oil and gas consulting services in Denver, candidly admitted to the statesman that he was not familiar with the particular candidates when he was asked to contribute $75,000. Gordon complied. It's worth noting that Henry Gordon doesn't live in Denver, but as the nation reports, the big money interests are taking advantage of a loophole in Colorado election law which imposes donation limits on every Colorado race from contests for local posts to statewide positions except local school board campaigns. Joining me now is Emily Sirota, candidate for the Denver School Board District 1. Thanks for joining me tonight, Emily. Thank you for having me. Ellie, uh, you've raised what seems to me to be a very, very large amount of money for a race like this. You would think so. You would think so, except in this out-of-control atmosphere where folks are able to write $26,000 checks, $25,000 checks, $11,000, $10,000. Those are the kind of campaign contributions my opponent is getting. What did you think you were getting into when you sliced some pizza and said, okay, I'm running? How much money I did you think you were going to have to raise and spend for this? Well, you know, it has been escalating over the last couple election cycles here in Denver. Uh, I didn't think it was going to escalate in, in such a way. I, I thought, you know, I was going to have to ask for money from some friends and family and community members, and it would be a lot of knocking on doors and talking to, to folks around the district. I, I had no idea uh, this kind of money was going to be dumped into Denver. Now, is this a matter of uh, something the Republican Party has always taken seriously and been very good at, which is looking all the way down the ballot uh, to develop a farm team, that the way you get, uh, in their view, a United States senator is first you have to get a school board member somewhere who then becomes maybe a state senator or a state representative, and then that person runs Barack Obama style for the United States Senate, becomes a United States senator. And the Republicans have always played a very long game in developing their candidates from the lowest level offices all the way up to the top. Is, is that what's going on here? here? Well, I, I suspect there probably is a, a little bit of that going on. Uh, we also have, have seen, you know, special interests playing a role here. Some of these huge donors, not only to my opponent's campaign, but uh, she's running as part of a slate of candidates in this school board election. And so those big donors have given to everyone in that slate. And some of those donors are connected to interests uh, that have to do with um, increasing access to, to vouchers and, and the privatization of our our public schools so I think there is some of that at play as well so is is there what is at stake for the big I was just going to get to could you expand a little bit on what's at stake for the big donors on the other side to the other candidate what's at stake for them in this election well, they, you know, they've been rather uh, coy about it. The, you know, some of them talk about we we have to continue down uh, this path. We can't alter from the course we're on. But, you know, I am running for school board because I have a little boy who will be heading into our public schools very soon. and. Oh, the progress that we have made just it's not good enough we need to bring I'm, I'm running because I think it's important to bring the focus back to our neighborhoods and our communities and making sure that all kids no matter where
where they live in Denver. They have access to great schools in their neighborhoods, and that's not the case right now, and that is not the path our school system is headed down right now. There are privatization interests who would like to see parents drive their kids halfway across town to find a good school, and uh, I, I think we can do better. Emily, what does this flood of money into a race like this do to people like yourself who consider getting in, who consider, as you do, I have a child, I want to get into this, I care about it. Uh, from that perspective, you discover there's going to be this big flood of money. Uh, is that inhibiting candidates making that decision? Absolutely. I, I think it's very intimidating to, to, you know, honest folks out there who could really make a difference in our education policy, in public policy across the board. But these days now you have to be a good telemarketer instead of somebody who actually understands policy and can work with communities to improve our education system. Emily Sirota, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me.